Much like No Game No Life, Madoka Magica is a 12 episode long anime. But unlike No Game No Life, this show doesn't suck ass. Madoka Magica is set in the magical girl genre, only it's more than that. It's kind of a deconstruction of the genre itself. It's an anime that asks the question, why does this genre exist in the first place? And then it attempts to answer that question. It's kind of like Cabin in the Woods, except that the horror has been replaced by high school girls in magical couture dresses. We follow Madoka, a non-magical girl living a non-magical life, when suddenly a voice starts asking for her help. In her head. Instead of seeking medical attention, an exorcist, or any form of competent adult, because this is an anime, and let's face it, competent adults are rarer than giant robots and magical girls, she follows the voice to an abandoned warehouse and meets a cat rabbit throw pillow named Kyube. Turns out Kyube was actually the voice in her head the whole time and was being attacked by the new girl in school, Homura. But eventually Sayaka, Madoka's BFF, catches up and the two go home safe and sa No the f they don't! Suddenly the world turns to a f***ing Salvador Dolly ping and a magical girl named Mommy, whose name isn't symbolic at all for any reason, shows up with an army of muskets and perforates the shit out of this watercolored nightmare. And yes, I said an army of muskets, not an army with muskets, because that wouldn't make any sense. This is an anime, not the Civil War, keep up. After the battle, the Pokemon the only Satan would choose is all like, Oh Sayaka, Madoka, I want to make a contract with you to be magical girl, so make a contract with me. You. Now how a Pokemon knows about contract litigation, I have no f***ing clue, but that's where our story starts. Now this anime is relatively new, having come out in 2011, which means that the animation is going to be pretty solid. Except for the weird surrealism of the watercolor world, which always seems to pull me out of the anime, but when the fighting starts, I always get pulled right back in. It was produced under Studio Shaft, which is a relatively new studio compared to a lot of the bigger ones. So I guess they figured that advertising inside their own f***ing anime was the best form of promotion because, oh look at that train. But before we get derailed, the animation is beautiful and flawless. What, what the... What? Wait, 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 what? One, two, six? Six fingers? Okay, it's mostly flawless. So unless you're a hypercritical dick like me, you're going to enjoy it just fine. The fights are fluid and hyperactive, the backgrounds are beautiful, even when muted, and the character design is pretty much exactly what you would expect from magical girl genre. The audio, on the other hand, isn't just above par. It kind of makes the show. Remember when I said that this anime is kind of a deconstruction of the genre? Well, the music really drives that point home. We have the intro, which is really upbeat and poppy, with all these cute visuals to accompany it, and then we have the outro, which is kind of quiet and understated and very melancholic, very much what you would see in a slice of life anime. Then we have the second outro, which is kind of dark and melodic and sort of sets this dystopian feel to it, which, given the context of the show, is a very nice touch. The dub is also something worth mentioning, considering the fact that a lot of the voice actresses on the show didn't have a lot to their resume beforehand. Aside from Carrie Kernan and Christina Valenzuela, the rest of the cast is relatively new to the anime world, although it is interesting to note that multiple cast members were also attached to Kill La Kill, Sword Art Online, and League of Legends. Now, before I even knew that fact, I already loved the dub. I thought the voices fit perfectly and everyone did a phenomenal job. So given that, I have a feeling that you're going to be hearing a lot more from these voice actors in the near future. Now, as for the plot, like Clannad, this one is kind of hard not to spoil. I already left out some pretty important things in the synopsis, but a few more things do need to be said here. First off, if you think this looks like Card Captors or Sailor Moon or really anything else in the genre, well, you're half right. There are magical girls and a cute creature that helps them out, but that's where the similarities end. This show's kind of dark and existential. It really delves into what magical girls are and the reason behind their very existence. Another important thing is how they become magical girls. Remember when I said they had to make a contract? Well, another part of that contract is that they also have to make a wish. Any wish they want, and it will come true, no matter what. Now, I know that sounds amazing and all, but here's my problem with it. I don't trust normal people, much less dead-eyed creatures from Planet Fluff and stuff. So if one came up to me and said, hey, I'll give you magical powers and grant you any wish that you want, I would say, no, thank you, please get away from me before I burn you in the face with the fire from whence you came, be Elzebub. Because in my experience as a human being, if somebody offers me a deal with a butt in it, as in I will grant you any three wishes you want, but first you must beat this child to death with your bare hands, then that person is much more trustworthy than a person who would offer me a deal with an and in it, as in I will give you all of the money and a nice bushel of grapes, because at least the first person was upfront with what they wanted from me. 
Now that's not to say that Kubei's trying to trick anyone or anything, but he's totally trying to trick everyone. Then again, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know for sure. Or do I? Lastly, I want to talk about the characters. There's only really six characters with a few peripheral characters to move the story along and help give the main characters relatability. Although I have to say that even though she's not a main character, I do love their teacher. She's always kind of in the background like the teacher from Charlie Brown, but if you listen closely, you can kind of hear her interjecting things from her real life into the lessons she's trying to teach, which is a nice little touch of realism. As for the main characters, they're pretty well put together. Each has a compelling backstory, except for maybe Mommy, and they're all vastly different from one another. This leads to a lot of really good interactions between them, and each character is relatable and likable once you get to know their backstory. Sort of. Also, the fact that they're all females is kind of cool. This show doesn't rely on cliche romance stories in order to pull in its demo. Instead, they just have badass magical girls doing badass magical girl shit. And while it's maybe not the first anime to target females this way, it's definitely the first in a long, long time, which I personally think makes it stronger. So adding that all up, what do we get? Well, there are things I don't like about it. This show's pretty strong. And it's different enough from the pack to be deserving of respect. So Madoka Magica gets an overall score of... 8.1 out of 10. If you're into the magical girl genre, give the show a look because all the elements that you're looking for are there. And if you're not in the magical girl genre, go ahead and give it a look anyways, because honestly, it is just that good. And if you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button and go ahead and comment down below telling me which anime you'd like me to review next. And if you don't like this video, just uh, do all that stuff anyways. Just, yeah, just uh, tell me, tell me why you don't like it in the comments below and subscribe so you can keep telling me why you don't like it. Yeah.